I don't think there's a job that you could get so much responsibility at such a young age. I changed so much. My confidence just went well high. It really is enjoyable, the camaraderie, being together. It's just a brilliant lifestyle if you're willing to put that little bit extra in. It's a kind of all-consuming job, but first and foremost, it is a challenge. It is something I've always wanted to do. I've just plucked up the courage and uh, come to the conclusion that I'd like to come in and give the army a try. When I first stepped foot into the recruitment office, the career staff were very helpful, because when you're working, it is daunting at first. But once you sit down and start talking to them, you find you relax more, and uh, it's very casual. There's no pressure put on you whatsoever. They just tell you a lot about what the armed forces involves and point out different regiments to you and what's available to you. I wanted to personally to go into the infantry, so I went back down there for the second time, and then I'd done my test that can then decipher what trade you can do in the army. I was overjoyed because I passed what I needed to be an infantry. I waited about a week till my second interview, basically to confirm you still want to go to the same regiment and to give you your dates for when you can go away to the selection centre. Just confirm everyone here is now for the recruit selection centre, yeah? Yeah. It was about a week and a half, two weeks before I actually went up to Perbright to do my selection. The first day entailed a medical. Went out and done a bit of fitness. And then we uh, had a briefing in the evening. And then after that, we had a bit of like social time where it was a chance for everyone to mingle in and get to know each other. The first thing the next morning, we had a one and a half mile run. It was quite hard because I, I hadn't really trained that much before I went. So, but I got through a pretty good time actually, I surprised myself. In the afternoon, we had command tasks, which was to get you working as a team. After we'd had command tasks, Mr. Price. It was the final interview. Uh, he, At the end of the interview, you're offered the job if you pass anything. I am more than happy to pass you, so congratulations on that. Thank you, sir. As soon as I got out of the recruit selection centre and was on the train, I was phoning up the careers office saying I wanted to take the job straight away. Um, I then had to take my pledge, which was a proud moment. And of the generals and officers sent over me. Congratulations, <laughs> the soldiers of the British Army. And it felt good because I knew I'd gone through that. I'd made that stage anyway, first step. Big step. I've been here now, this will be my fifth week. When I first arrived at Platinum Form, it was quite a bit of a culture shock because there was um, everyone was in uniform. There was a lot of marching around. Everything was done to a strict time regime. It was totally, it was spot on, totally different from civilian life. It's been all right so far. It's, we've had times where I've got a bit stressed, but everyone does. Some parts of the training, physical training especially, has been hard. On the mental side, like uh, commanding officers and our platoon, been much more helpful than what I thought they'd be. You just hold him. Bring that hand down there. So you hold him, much so. Right. Before I came in, a few of my friends were saying, oh, you're going to get a lot of racism and all that. And since I've been in here, at phase one, Bass and Bond, I haven't encountered one. We were briefed up quite a few on quite a few occasions about it and there's a zero tolerance towards it and I haven't encountered no problems whatsoever. Not saying it doesn't go on, but I personally haven't encountered any at all. There's quite a few of my friends that have been into the armed forces. When I told them I was going in, they was I don't think they thought I'd stick it, but right? but I've come first basically to the halfway point already. Um, and it's totally different to what they told me. There's a wide variety of people there, and on the whole, everyone gets on pretty well. At the start, it was more, when the pressure started coming, it was more arguing, but now, sussed out that arguing isn't getting nowhere, you're pulling together now, people are starting to get a lot more communal together, pulling tighter, getting things done. If someone doesn't understand something or they're finding difficulties with their locker, like, the person that's best at doing whatever in that locker will go and help them out. I enjoy the PT. We get physical training and also I like going out on the ranges. Wait for one or two seconds, exhale and slowly the trigger. Okay? Happy. Scope up. Good, relax. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the pass, I'm afraid. Um, it's going to be quite nerve wracking because it's going to be quite a few people and it's a big day where everything's got to be done correctly, totally, 100%. Um, but I'm looking forward to it because it's something that I've achieved, I've come I've been a civilian, got through the training, and I've come out the other side of it. I know for a fact my mum will be well overjoyed, she'll be well proud of me, definitely. And uh, my friends will have quite a shock 
should think. Before I come in, I was, the, I was a postman. If I wasn't here, I would still I'd be working because I've always been a working person, but I don't think I'll still be with the post office. I don't think I'll be enjoying life as much as I am at the moment, even though it's hard. It is something that I've always wanted to do, and I've finally plucked up the courage to do it. I've been born and brought up in Glasgow and just went to my local state school and uh, did a lot of sport at school and then carried on to university. I did civil engineering at university and that's why I was initially drawn to the Royal Engineers. The reason I decided to join as an officer as opposed to a soldier is the challenge of that increased responsibility. The first stage is after you've written all your application forms, just the RCB briefing, which lasts a couple of days and just introduces you to what you'll meet at the next stage, which is the regular commissions board itself. That takes place over three days and there's a full range of tests and then you've got the kind of whole physical side of it, such as the assault course and um, what we call command tasks in the army, which aim to just kind of try and establish your leadership qualities under a kind of pressurised environment. When you arrive at Sandhurst, you're left with no illusions of how life's going to be. You're marched everywhere at about 160 paces per minute. It's a very funny experience because everyone's in it together and everyone's just going, whoa, what is this all about? I know it's a bit of a cliche, but there's definitely no such thing as a typical day in this job. When you get to your bed at night, you can just reflect on all the stuff you've done and think, wow, what a day. I think everybody that comes out of Sandhurst, perhaps the most daunting challenge is the first time they actually meet their platoon. It's something I really look forward to, uh, you know, just making that first impression and getting a first impression of them. At the end of the day, if you aren't passionate about what you do, your soldiers will soon pick up on it and realise that you're doing it just to get the job done. Obviously, it's, the army's not everybody's cup of tea, but it, first and foremost, it is a challenge. Secondly, the rewards you get from it are just incredible. Things like travel and adventurous training. Within 14 weeks of joining the army, I was out in Norway doing a ski instructor course. I don't really think many uh, civilian careers can offer that. And because I do enjoy it so much, I would maybe consider staying in for about eight years. When you're still perfectly young enough to come out and pursue a full career in Civvy Street, I think a few of my friends working, um, I think they are slightly envious that they didn't have the, the courage to get up and go for it. Um, when they see, you know, that where their careers are going and where mine's already been. When I went to the recruitment office, they were quite willing to accept me because of the course I'd already done at college. My family were quite proud, especially my mum. I think my friends were quite shocked they didn't think it was the sort of thing I'd want to do. But uh, it was quite a good reception from most people and it's what I want to do, so <laughs> no one's going to stop me. I am at the moment um, a fully qualified vehicle mechanic. I've done the courses necessary to qualify me for that. My next big course will be my artificial course, which takes me into management. So all the qualifications that I've got, I could take over into Civvy Street and they are recognised. Well, we work a, a five day week, but Wednesday afternoons is normally a sports afternoon. So um, you get to do, if you do a regimental sport, you go away to do that. Or each section will organise a sport football one week, volleyball another week. Um, we also do uh, PT twice a week on a Tuesday and Thursday morning and on a Friday we do assault courses, boot runs, stretcher races, the nasty stuff. <laughs> For me fitness is a big part of the army, um, running especially. I really started getting into running once I joined the army. Um, I've got my army colours for half marathons, I run for the regiment on cross country and I do a lot of running in my spare time. 
Sometimes you get fed up, yeah. Um, when well, you get paid 24 hours a day, you, they can call you in at any time. You get duties on weekends. You go on exercise for three weeks where that's it. You stay out on the area for three weeks. But then there's the other times when you, you know you're getting leave. You know you're going to get paid if you're ill. You always got money in your pocket. And those times make up for the times that you get a little bit fed up and cheesed off. And if you do really get fed up, you've got, you'll just go out, have a few beers together, have a laugh and you forget about it. I'm a lot better off than most of my mates at home. They haven't got a lot of money. Um, most of them are saddled with kids as well. And uh, they do envy what I've got because I've got my own car that's paid for, I've got my own house, and it's all because of this job. Also, you get the opportunity to do so many things that you wouldn't have the chance to do in City Street. You get um, sponsored to go and do adventure training. You get the chance to do sports, um, to travel over the world to different places on exercise. You can go to Kenya, Australia, America and it's all paid for and it's just a brilliant lifestyle if you're willing to put that little bit extra in. When I first decided to join I was about 15, just turning 16. It was scary but anxious at the same time, going up to put it in, but I was sort of excited because something I've always wanted to do. I didn't know what to expect, but when I get in there, um, they were all all right, they were friendly. You know, they weren't like pushy pushy join the army. The first day I joined the army, it was quite emotional. Leaving my family, it wasn't just, you know, going up the road. It was at a completely different country. I'd never been, well, I'd been to England, you know, on school trips and stuff like that, but never a moan. Most of the other people are like 21 or if not older. Me sitting there just turned 17. I thought, you know, maybe I'm not going to fit in here. And then sort of got chatting and the lads were great. Within a week, you know, I, I could have said that, you know, a couple of them would have been very close mates within no time at all. Within them few months of training, I changed so much. Not my personality changed, you know. It was more things I was doing for myself and my confidence just went, you know, well high. Not, you know, big headed or nothing like, but just. My pass out prayer, I think, is probably one of the most proudest days of my life. You've got all your, your smart uniform on and you're doing all, everyone's doing the drill together and it's just, I don't know, you just feel really as if you've achieved something. My mum thought it was just brilliant, she couldn't get over it. Seeing her little boy all starting to grow up, you know, getting into the whole world himself and, you know, starting to do things for himself. I've been in coming on three years now and I've got my car licence through the army, I've got my CAT C and CAT C and E right up to HGV licence through the army and then I went to the ABLE course which um, is a specialist trade. ABLE stands for Automatic Bridge Launching Equipment. With ABLE teamwork's um, everything. It might sound a bit sort of you know over the top but it could be the difference between someone getting a really really serious injury until some, everyone being alright. So you've got your own safety to think of and then you've got ten other people. I live in the bar because I'm not married. And it's sort of like a second family, I suppose, because we walk with each other, we live with each other, and we go out with each other, you know, that sort of stuff. So it's like, it's, I know, it's a different kind of friendship than your mates back home. It's hard to put my finger on one part of army life that I enjoy. There's the opportunities here for everything. If, if you're good at a sport, you can follow it up in the army. If you've got like an interest, like, rock climbing, abseiling, you can do it all in the army, it's here for you. But you have to look for it, it doesn't come to you. I think one of the, the biggest things you learn at Sandhurst is the uh, uh, it's confidence, it really starts to bring you out of your shell. You're constantly put into environments and situations on the course where you, you, you have to lead and everyone's looking, at, looking towards you to lead. They will definitely bring out the leadership you've got and enhance it. It's times when um, you do feel responsibility on your shoulders uh, a lot, when people will look at you with, with, with the look in their eyes that says, you're the only person who's got the authority to make that decision and it's, it's a choice that's got to be made by you. I'm happy to take on that responsibility and, and, and enjoy it. The reason I was keen to join the Army was, was really um, the, the, the travel, the man management, uh, and the constant challenges, and the, the diversity of the job. One minute I'm doing sort of office work, the next minute I'm, I'm, I'm jumping out of a plane. You 
the last 12 months I've travelled to the Falkland Islands, uh, Cyprus, I've been to Jordan, Northern Ireland, and the company's also been to Belize. To test your skills in those harsh uh, and changeable environments is, is very good. To, to get the maximum out of your training team, you've got to motivate people a lot. Being an officer, you, the main part of your job is man management. Some of the, uh, the, the problems that I, I get uh, that aren't military related are could be financial, uh, discipline, uh, relationships, and they're all things that will be put in front of me. OK, got your, your course report here from uh, pre-course. We need to fire you through to see the OC at some stage, so I'll book in for an interview next week. Interview Monday with the OC? Yes. It's something you've not had training for. It's something you just have to apply common sense and judgment to. Thanks, Paul. Thanks a lot. The relationship with the platoon sergeant is integral to a strong platoon. He's seen almost every situation before, and, and he, is, uh, he is your right-hand man. When I see my uh, colleagues from university, um, they're making good progress, and. Uh, you know, good, good for them, but they are going to the same workplaces every day. Uh, they haven't had the travel I've had. They haven't had the, 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 probably the laughs I've had um, or the responsibility I've had. I think there's a, there's a lot of preconceptions about uh, a career in the army. I thought I was going to get up every morning at silly o'clock in the morning and uh, go to bed every night at whatever time and not have any spare time off. And I'd probably say that I have more time uh, to myself than I, than, I, than I have had working in civilian companies. I, I think the best thing for, for people to do is literally to go and see for themselves. I feel that I've had a, a good training uh, from the Army, so if I was to leave, and there's things that I'd achieved in the Army that I think I could pass on to certain careers, maybe. The diversity of the job and, and also um, the camaraderie that you, you have within uh, the platoon is, is uh, second to none. All the lads in the troop, and most people in the regiment, know me as Beef, which is my nickname. In fact, I don't think many people in the actual regiment know me by any other name but Beef, so that's me. All I've ever wanted to do was to be in the army. It's the sort of thing you love when you're a kid, isn't it? And it just grew from there. I turned up for my basic training. I was the youngest person in my training party. Everyone there was built like twin-sided razor blades, obviously. I felt a bit of the odd one out. It's very frightening. There's no way on this planet you can describe the feeling of tipping up there on the first day. It's just a big culture shock. My job on a daily basis, being an armoured engineer tank commander, is just to make sure the maintenance gets done on, on my tank. It's, uh, there's so many jobs to do all the time that it's day in, day out fixing them. I like doing things with my hands, you know, so when we're doing demolitions, bridge building, I absolutely love it a bit, love it a bit. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I joined up at 17 and a half, and when you're a sapper, you don't think there's much responsibility on you, but as soon as you go out on tour, you're actually doing quite an important job. Go out to Bosnia, things like that. First I went to Bosnia, I was 19, seeing all the things that go on out there certainly opens your eyes up to everything that's going on in the world. I don't know what I thought life would be like before I joined the army, you know, one of my friends actually thought that you lived on your tank with a tent and that was it, he didn't even think there was an army camp anywhere, that you lived like a normal life and like that, he just thought once you joined the army, that was you off marching around the world sort of thing, so everyone's perspective is different. OK, son, switch off. People say, oh, I wouldn't join the army. I couldn't have someone shouting at me all the time. It doesn't happen. I mean, do you think anyone would get wanted to get shouted at 24 hours a day, you know, for seven days a week? I don't. It really is enjoyable, you know. The life, just with the lads, the camaraderie, the boys being together, having a few beers, cracking jokes. The biggest thing I'd say to anyone is if you think you want to do it, to it. You do get a good career out of the army, as long as you're willing to put the time and the effort in. The thing with the army, you're doing something different every day. You're not really going to be pushed as hard in many civilian jobs that I can think of. 
the achievements you make on a week to week basis keep you constantly interested. It builds your character and it doesn't matter where you've come from or what you've done before. It's one of those things where you, I think you have to experience it for yourself.